Welcome back. In this video, we will continue where we left off from the previous video. And in the previous video, we just looked at how to connect to a specific file that we saved on Dropbox or any other JSON file actually, and get its data printed out to the screen. But uh, that's normally not nice to only get your data printed out on the screen. You want to do something specific with every single value. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to where I saved my files into, or my JSON files in Dropbox. So I've just created a JSON file there called stories. And if you open it up, you can just see the JSON file again starts off as a map and it's got a key called stories and the value is a list of maps which contains the stories. There's a heading, a story and a date for the value, the keys. And the values, there's the heading value, the story and the date. And then the next one, exactly the same thing, heading, storing and date, heading, storing and date. But there's at the same level as stories, there's another key called source where this time the value is in fact just a map with a name key and the value news24 and a location key with a value news, news24.com. So let's see how we can get the data from this JSON file and display it nicely in our Dart application. Now again to get this JSON file, let me just copy it quickly and we can, we can clearly see then, so copy this, and if you want to work with a specific JSON file that you're not used to and you need to, to look at it to make sure that you understand how it works, you can go to this web page again, jsonviewer.stack.hu. It opens up nicely. You can format it, nicely format it, but the viewer will, will help you a lot. So we can see the different values that we actually have got in this file. Okay, and this will help us to decide what we need to do in coding. Okay, so let's go to our code again. Firstly, this link is still my old one from the previous video that's just linking to test. So I want to go to stories now. So I'm going to right click and I say copy Dropbox link. Just wait for this notification to pop up. Then you know you've got the Dropbox link. So that's stories. I've got the link now. Let's open up Visual Studio Code and I'm going to replace my link there. So I'm going to paste it there. And remember to replace your www with a dl. Now I'm going to save and I'm going to run this one again. And now we should see the data from that JSON file. So it will be a lot more data. But you can see when we print it out, I mean, it's, it's not really readable. You can see that the data is there. But we need to, to get some specific data from it. So how do we do that? At the beginning there in the main method, we fetch the data and we just print out the whole piece of data. So remember that this data now is in fact a map of key value pairs where the key is a string and the value is some dynamic value. It could be anything. So if I look at the first entry there, let's say we want to get back uh, just the source. So just the source will mean that inside of this map, there's a key called source and we want to get back the value. So all I need to do is to go and say, well, I want to go to data and I want to get the key called source. Now let's run this again and see what we get back. And now you can see it's only the source part. So the name news 24, location news 24. So we're only getting back this part because that's the only part we asked for. Now, let's say I only want to get this value, the name, that's news24. How would I do that? Well, firstly, in the big map, there's a key called source. So I'll need to go to that key. And then I'll need to go to another key called name in order to get news24. So in order to do that, we will do the following. I'm going to say source and then just add another key directly next to it. And the name, we can use name or location. Let's try location there. So I'm going to use location and let's run it and see if we can get the JSON data there. And by getting just the location, I should get news24.com. So that's how you can go and get specific values. And also, let's go to something a bit more interesting. For example, let's go into stories because, because stories is in fact not a map like source. It's a list of maps. So how do we do this one? So obviously we need to go into the key called stories 
and then we will get a list of maps. In order to get every single one of these maps, there's index values. Okay, so let's look at that quickly. So the key is stories. So let's see if we can just get back stories quickly. So I'm going to remove those. Instead of location or source there, I'm going to say stories, and let's see what that returns back for me. Okay, so there you can see we've got the list. It starts off with a heading, and there's the last one. Heading dot is awesome, and it ends with the date. So basically what we get back when we just say get data stories is we get the key stories, and this is the value. It's those three maps. Okay, so if I want to get only the first map, I need to go to index number zero. So how do we do that? So instead of having a key value there, we will just have the index zero there. And let's run that. And we should now only get the very first story. Right, there's the very first story. Heading, and this African startup teaches young Nigerians to code on smartphones and so forth. And now we can again see there's keys inside of this story. There's a heading key. There's a story key. And there's a date key. So let's say we only want the date from here. Or we only want to have the heading. So then I can just add to that and go and say heading. Now let's run this again. And there we get the heading. African startup teaches young Nigerians to code on smartphones. So by having a tool like we've got on this website, it's really easy to see which ones do you need to go and query in order to get the specific data out of it. So let's see if we can create a nice application to just show us this data a bit better. So I'm going to start off at the start. I'm going to have a print method there. And it's going to be as a string. And I'm going to start off with string interpolation there. I'm going to go into data. And I want to print out the source first. So let's print out the source. The name is news24 and the location is news24.com. Let's show that right at the start. And then we can start showing the stories. So I'm going to start off with data. And the key there is called source. So if you look at that again, the key is called source. And inside of there, we've got two other keys, name and location. All right. So let's look at that quickly. So source will be shown first, and the key then, let's use the name key there. Now let's see if this works before we carry on. Okay, so we can see it returns back news24, and maybe we want to have the location now in brackets. So we can add a bracket after that one, opening and closing bracket, use the dollar sign again with the two um, curly brackets so that you can interpolate uh, if it's only one thing like just data, then you don't need those curly braces. But as soon as you put dots there or you add some, some brackets in there as part of the coding, uh, then you need to have that opening and closing curly bracket. Okay, so we're going to go back to data. Again, go to source. But now we do not want to have the name. We want to have the location key. So I'm going to say location there. So let's see if that is, in fact, now in brackets. News24, news24.com, 100%. Okay, so now let's say that we want to go and run a loop through this list of stories. So first, we need to get the list. So the list will be just on the JSON object, which is the data object, and we're going to get the key called stories. That will return back a list of maps for me. Okay, so the key is named stories to get a list of maps. So let's go and do that quickly. So we will say list stories because we're going to get back a list of maps and we're going to refer back to data and the key that we want to have there as we see now is called stories. So what will I get back now? I will have a list of the stories but the stories or this list will in fact be a list of maps. So let's run a for loop through list, this list now, and I'm going to say int i equals zero. It works a bit better if you've, you can have the index value here. So I'm going to say less than stories dot length. So if there's three stories, it's going to run three times. If there's four, it's going to run four times and so forth. And let's have the i plus plus there. Okay, so already got the data. 
We've got a list of all the stories now, and uh, maybe we can start off with a simple print statement just to add some space underneath uh, the News24 stuff. And, and now we can start off with a print statement there. Okay, so let's start off with the heading. So I'm going to say heading and just do something simple there. And now we can extract the heading for each and every story. So let's look at that again. How do we extract the heading? We already got the list of stories now. So how do I get the heading? Well, I'll need to have an index value first to get the heading. Okay, so I'll need to go to the stories of mine and go into position 0, 1, and 2, and then get the key called heading. So let's see how we do that. Okay, so we need to go to stories. We need to go to the specific index where we are, and that's why we use the loop. Uh, they normally don't like if you just use int here, so let's use var. So we're going to go to stories i. So stories i will basically give me the 0, the 1, or the 2. And then we need to go into a specific key that we want, and we want heading. Okay, so now we're going to go into heading next. And that will display the heading for me. Okay, so if we just run it now, we should see all the headings listed. There we go. Heading 1, African Startup Touches Young Nigeria's to code on smartphones, hit with entry does, and dot is awesome. All of the headings, okay, 100%. Now, maybe we want to have the date next to the heading, maybe in brackets, to just show a small space there, and then we show the date. So how will we get the date? Let's look at that quickly. So you can see date is just another key. The same as if we've got the heading, but we're just going to use date. Okay, so let's go back. Same thing as that we have here. I'm going to copy that part, put it inside of these brackets because that's where we want it. And instead of heading, I'm going to say date. Now let's see if that works. Run it again. 100%. You can see the dates on the side. Okay, and now we can start to print out the actual stories. So we will have print again, and we will print the stories. So how do we print out the stories? Now let's look at this again. Again, you're going to go to the specific index value and then just another key called story. So exactly the same way, it's just another key again. So I'm going to actually paste that again. Uh, let's just paste it. And instead of saying heading or date, we will just go to story. Now let's run this quickly again and see what we get. And there we go. News24 at the top, there's the heading. And there's the stories underneath it. And that is how you work with JSON data. Now, let's see if we can add our own story now. So let's say this is your own little app that you're writing and you have your own stories there or you've got your, your own updates of whatever you want. And uh, let's, let me just quickly go to... I've got too many notepads open now. Let's just close all of them. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this stories. There we go. And let's add another story here quickly. So underneath this story, you can see the dot is awesome. Uh, let me just take this one. I'm going to copy that part. And I'm, remember your comma. And I'm going to paste it there. Okay, so let's say we're going to say the heading. I'm just going to say uh, new heading. And I'm going to replace this with new story and let's make the date 30 June 2021 okay so as soon as I save this now it should sync so you can see there it's it's still syncing now and as soon as that check mark is there I can run it and I should see another story in here and I just added that story in my own Dropbox on my own computer and uh Okay, so I've got something wrong there. Let me just open up that file again. So very important to actually test it. And that's normally just a, an extra comma or something that you have there. Yeah, I've got an extra comma there at the end. So just remember to remove that one. Okay, so let's just wait for it to sync again. And then we will try and run it again. And there we go. There's the new story, new heading, new story, 30 June 2021. 
And this is how you can use Dropbox as your own little web server or something <laughs> that you can actually go and add your own data as JSON. And it's really small file, so it shouldn't take that long to load, like you can see now. And even if you run this in, uh, you can use it in, in your Flutter coding on your mobile phone. You can use the same type of coding just in uh, in widgets, and you can show something nice on the screen. And it's it's quite fast. It depends on your internet connection, obviously. So you can see there. Once it launches, it connects and it will start showing. So this all depends on your internet connection. It takes a short while to just connect to the page and get the data and then display it. So I hope you've learned something from this video that you can now work with JSON files and extract data from a JSON object. See you in the next video.